Welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today I'm going back to the basics. I'm, I'm revamping an older video that I did many years back on how to soundproof a door. And since then, and having designed several more studios, I've really come across a different approach um, than I had originally done with the Roger Vice book, um, Home Recording Studio Build It Like the Pros. So, you know, we all kind of grow into our own designs, I think, the more we build studios. And starting with the Roger Vice approach is great, uh, but I found that it didn't always work for me, so now I'm kind of leaning into a different one. So this is going to be a two-part seri series, maybe three, but most likely two-part, and this will be the first part where I'm going to go over the framing, um, some special things you got to pay attention to with framing your doors. I'm also going to talk about um, specific rubber seals that I use, uh, and then I'm also going to talk about sway bracing, and then finally I'm going to give you an itemized list of every single item you need um, and where I like to order it from here in the United States so that you can build out your perfect soundproof door um, using all the experience that I have. Uh, from building, you know, dozens of studios now. So, so before we jump in, I want to let you know that I have a free soundproofing workshop. Uh, this is 45 minutes of in-depth teaching, uh, going from the start to the finish of how I would design a studio on paper. And it kind of just goes through a lot of my knowledge of the things I did wrong, the things I wish I had done better. And you'll learn from that as you go to the workshop. So to watch that workshop, go ahead and go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, enough rambling here. Let's dive into this lesson on how to build a soundproof door, part one. All right, let's start with framing. So I have this diagram here that I, I built out in SketchUp, and this is just showing you a typical framing uh, of a double wall system. Now, what I'm talking about in this video applies to if you're doing a single wall system, and then it also can apply to if you have one exterior wall and one interior wall. Um, but for this, for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna imagine that both these walls are interior walls inside of your home, and we're trying to build a soundproof door in that double wall system. Now you can see here, uh, this is, if you have any experience with framing, this probably looks pretty standard. I designed this for 24 inches on center. However, before doing this, I would always check that your local building codes and also the weight of the wall uh, can be carried by 24 inch on center studs versus 16 inches on center studs. So just double check that before you go into this. I lean towards 24 inches on center because it's easier, less materials, but also it's less connection points when we're soundproofing. So less wood, less places for sound to transfer through the system. Now, beyond the 24 inches versus 16 inches on center, there's one key difference here, and that is having two king studs. So the king studs are going to be the studs that go from floor to ceiling surrounding our door opening. And you'll notice that we've got two of those king studs in this diagram, and then you have your jack studs or inner studs, and those will support the inside of the door, and then you have your header. So the really big difference here is just making sure that you add support to this heavy door. These doors are going to weigh at least 140 pounds after we're done with them. So they need to have support and some bracing. All right, number two is we're going to talk about these rubber seals. Now this is an idea that I actually learned from J.H. Brandt, who's another studio designer, acoustician that I really respect in the field. And he has recommended using rubber uh, along the gap between your one inch air gap right there in the walls. And you'll see in this diagram here that I'm actually gonna put the rubber on the outside of my king studs rather than the inside of my jack studs. The reason for that is that I'm now looking into using pre-finished steel door frames. So this will make it easier to install the framing of the door. And those frames actually wrap around the finished wall. So that will mean once the wall has two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on it, and then the stud and then the air gap will actually wrap and push in that steel framing um, so the rubber would get in the way of that. So to fix that, I've decided to put the rubber on the inside, uh, or I guess I should say the outside of the king studs there. And we want to seal it with acoustic sealant and then you can pop it in with some wood screws. Uh, whatever way you want to adhere the rubber is up to you and your contractor. The main point is that it's airtight and this will block you know, nasty smells that it can accumulate into from the air cavity into your door area and then into your studio. And then it's also going to ensure that we can put 
later on in part two of this series, I'll talk about putting in some one inch Corning 703 in that gap and then covering it with fabric. So it looks like a nice finished seal, even though those two walls aren't actually connected with wood or metal or anything that would transfer sound easily. Also notice that the rubber seal would go on top of the outside of the header, and then you could put your cripple studs or stud on top of the rubber. This way we guarantee that that one inch air gap on our header is also sealed up. You won't need any rubber on the bottom because we're gonna be uh, cutting out those studs on the bottom there in the diagram of this wall and then putting in a threshold for the door. So that part will be sealed up anyways. Lastly, before we move on into the hardware part of this lesson, I wanted to talk a little bit about sway bracing. This is something that's probably forgotten about or overlooked, um, but it's a very important part of the process of having a double wall system. The reason being that your inside wall is not gonna be connected to your ceiling joist directly, which is how you would normally frame a wall. Instead, we wanna leave a little bit of an air gap so that there's no sound transfer from our ceiling joist to our inside wall. However, we still need to have support there because of the weight of the drywall and also the weight of that door constantly opening and closing. Remember, again, this door could be upwards of 150 pounds or more. So we wanna make sure that we adequately brace the inside wall. I really like using the IB3 clips from the soundproofing company. Uh, there may be other companies out there. I've always enjoyed working with the soundproofing company. And these IB3 clips, as you can see in this video, just sit on top of the top sill plate of your inside wall and then attach directly to the ceiling joists, uh, ceiling rafters above that inside wall. So they're kind of cool. You can use them in a bunch of different directions. You could use them both horizontally and vertically. Uh, in my studio, I ended up using them vertically to attach the top sill plate, like I said, to the inside joists. And you place those every 48 inches on center to ensure that your wall is supported. If you can't find the IB3 clips, Mason Industries is one of the top companies when it comes to sound isolation products and clips, and they have a sway bracing clip as well called the WIC WIC isolation clip, which comes highly recommended. All right, let's talk about the door hardware here. So I'm actually gonna read off this list because I did a bunch of research um, from the True Door website, which is T-R-U-D-O-O-R. Uh, I've mentioned this company before and I recently bought my acoustic seals from them. They were really easy to work with. The shipping came right on time and uh, it's totally worth it, I find, to find a company that's got their stuff organized uh, when you're doing these projects because having things shipped to you and making your life a little easier is a lot better than having to source individual door parts from all over your uh, community or going to Home Depot or whatever. So if you're in the United States, I highly recommend checking out True Door. This is where I got all these products. But if you can't use TrueDoor, if you want to use local suppliers wherever you are in the world, um, you can use these as references for what I'm looking at and then see if you can find something similar in your own market. I will say that, you know, in my experience, I'm, I'm always leveling up. I'm trying to get better hardware, better hinges, better lock sets, um, better quality, everything for these soundproof doors because they're so heavy and they go through a lot of wear and tear. So there's places where you may want to cheap out and save a little money. And I always put in a little caveat that says, you know, my experience has told me that when you save a couple hundred bucks here and there, it starts to add up and your door will suffer over the long term because of it. So if you really don't have the budget, you can try to, you know, get slightly cheaper seals, um, slightly cheaper doors, things like that. But overall, I would recommend sticking with the recommendations I have here uh, and you'll be happy you did. All right, so let's jump into some of these recommendations here. So we're gonna start off with a paint grade primed MDF solid core door. And these are the pricing on True Door. Obviously, you know, taxes and shipping would add some cost, but this gives you an idea of how much everything will cost uh, just out the gate. $183 for the paint grade primed MDF solid core door. Then I recommend getting the neoprene rubber strips. I found these on Amazon for $27.89 for 10 feet. Depending on your door size, you may need uh, two to three of these per door. So just keep that in mind as you're ordering it. Then there's the Cal Royale NM series mortise lock set. This was the cheapest lock set I could find on um, True Door. Lock sets, uh, mortise lock sets are extremely expensive, but $206.96 uh, was the best I could find. And a mortise lock set is really gonna help with the weight 
and just the wear and tear of your door, you really don't want to go with your typical $20, $40 Home Depot lock set. Um, I highly recommend getting something higher quality. Then we have the ABH A110 HD Heavy Duty Full Mortise Concealed Continuous Geared Hinge. Until recently, I had never heard of a, a continuous geared hinge, but I really love the idea. This is a hinge that can hold up to a 450 pound door um, and it goes the entire length of your door and it comes in at $85.05. Then you've got the Pemco 2006 STC Acoustic Latching Panic Saddle Threshold with Bumper Seal. That's a fancy name for just a, a door threshold at the bottom uh, that comes in at $42.10. And then the timely pre-finished steel door frame looks like it should work well for $130. Um, these will basically just fit over your walls like I mentioned earlier and then you can hang your door directly off the steel door frame. Lastly, these are the real ones that cost a bit of money but I do highly recommend them. There's the Zero International 367 AA Heavy Duty Surface Mounted Automatic Door Bottom that comes in at $157.58 and then the Zero International 770 AA Adjustable Perimeter Gasseting Acoustic Door Seal Set for a whopping $538.64. That's the higher end one. You could drop it down to the lower end one and save a couple hundred bucks. Again, I tend to go for the highest quality I can when doing this stuff. The acoustic perimeter gasketing will go all the way around the interior of your door and we'll talk more about that in part two of this video. So when you add that all up, it's not the cheapest door you've imagined and this is just for one door, remember? So for your entryway, you're gonna have to double this. So the total cost is $1,371.22 and that should maybe drop your jaw if you've never done any door research before. If you have done soundproof door research, you might notice that that's actually not terrible compared to the six dollars to $8,000 it can cost to get a double door system from a pre-made, you know, reputable soundproof door company. The total cost, just so you know, if we double that, comes out to $2,742.44 uh, for one entryway. And that doesn't even count the extra stuff that I'm gonna talk about in part two. But that gets you most of the way there. I would say 80 to 90% of the way there is the cost. So we might be looking at around $3,000 in cost um, for two doors. Um, so do your research. This is still probably way cheaper than buying two um, pre-made soundproof doors. Uh, but you know, you could always try to see and, and compare it out. All right. So that concludes part one of this video. I hope it was helpful, uh, in just giving you a lot of my secrets and what I've learned. You know, this is what I would tell my clients, uh, when I'm trying to get them to build some really high quality, solid soundproof doors in their studio. Now to review, just remember to do the two King studs, not just one King stud when you're doing your soundproof doors on each side of the wall. And then remember to use sway bracing on the inside wall and put rubber along the outside of your king studs and then also on the top of your header. Make sure to use the materials I recommended or something very similar. If you have a really tight budget, you can also try to knock it down a couple notches. But remember, I I've researched hard and kind of looked through and combed through a lot of these products to find what I think is gonna be high quality and the best quality product for your soundproof doors. Stay tuned for part two, should come out next week if you're watching this in real time. And uh, I look forward to teaching you all some more about soundproofing and uh, home recording acoustics next week. Thanks so much for watching and listening on our podcast.